Hi, in this video we're going to learn just a little bit about how to use this website called ngphylogeny.fr, which is a website that allows you to do a, a, a different kinds of phylogenetic analyses. I would invite you to spend some time looking at the documentation page, which gives an overview, for example, of what the kinds of things they could do. So they can do anything from blast and blasting, alignment, curation, tree reconstruction, and rendering. And they all, this uh, website also can do different kinds of branch supports. So you could read about that. And in the one-click workflows, they have four options that are kind of pre-built. These may work for you. Um, you could read through these to see whether these match your the kinds of analyses and the size of the data set that you have. Um, these are laid out here in more detail below exactly what's happening. So for example, let's look at phi ML plus SMS. So this is going to receive an input data set, and then it will do a mapped alignment. It will also then do a cleanup of that alignment using BMG, BMGE, and then it will create, um, do tree reconstruction in Phi ML, uh, which includes kind of a searching for the best model that should be used and then a tree image. So that's that's one example. And you could read through these other ones. Uh, one that you can do that's kind of nice as well with larger data sets would be the fast tree um, one. But if you, if you want to get more um, complicated, then you need to add extra things. It does tell what all of the default options are in these. But you need to go to the advanced workflows if you want to do something that's a little bit more complicated. Um, this also is where you could make sure and ensure that you're getting branch support values uh, uh, calculated if, if that's what you want to have. Um, and you can also use the workflow make maker to just make any of the workflows that you want. So let's go back to this main page and let's show you how to do this. So first let's start with just the one click. Let's use the fast tree one click. So I'm going to click on that workflow and then I need to find my data. Now I could just paste it into this box or I can choose a file. So I've got a file that's all ready to go on my uh, uh, desktop here that I created. It's called mammals.fast. I'm going to show you what that actually looks like so that you can get uh, an idea of kind of what this looks like. So this is a, just a text file. Again, remember this is in that really simple FASTA format where you have the greater than sign, the name of the species, and I would or I would uh, encourage you to use either common names or the scientific names. But get rid of all of the other stuff that you're may, that maybe comes with the sequence when you export it or when you download it out of uh, GenBank. Okay, from NCBI. So make it names that are that are usable because those are the names that are going to be on the tips of the tree. Uh, so you can see here I've got this this data set of mammals. Okay, and then um, I can simply at this point just push submit. Okay, so when this window comes up now, it's now doing the workflow, and the first thing it's going to do is going to say, "All right, can I read this file? Is it a readable file?" And if there were any mistakes in the file format that you had, it would pick up on that and it would not be able to parse it and then put it through the workflow. So you'll know fairly quickly if there's a problem. Um, of course, a lot of this is dependent on how busy their server is. So if their server is really busy, you get put in their queue and it may be a while until their server gets the chance to grab your your data set and start doing something. But you can see, if uh, for the most part, it's pretty quick. So it already showed, for example, the file that was given. I'm going to load this in a new tab so that you can see what this looks like. And this is the file that I gave it, right, with all of the different uh, organisms. You can see that for a while they look almost kind of lined up, but then these are unaligned uh, sequences. You can also tell that because here at the very end, if I scroll over to the end, you'll be able to see this as well, right? They end in different lengths, so this is an unaligned file. Um, the very first thing then that is done is alignment. So you can see MAFT has already completed the alignment, and we can see what that looks like in a new tab. And now you can see the 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 
raw view down below here shows that there is alignment. But notice there are areas of this alignment where it's like one organism has data, but nothing else really does, or maybe even a few chunks. And we can see that again also as we scroll through here, right? Some of them have data there, some don't. Sometimes you have where it's only one organism has data and nothing else does. But at least it's aligned all the way down the data set. Coming back to the main page, we now look at this next step in the process, which is this cleaning up of the alignment. This, pro this process looks for really gappy areas or messy areas, and it'll essentially chop those out. But it does it with an objective function, and so um, it's, it's still a scientific scientifically repeatable objective way of cleaning up your alignment. And so we can look and see what those what it looks like after the fact. So now notice the difference here. I'm going to go back and forth. Remember there were these areas of these kind of big gappy areas and those are now all gone. They've been excluded. Okay. And um, that what's what's happened in the BMG. Then it created the tree. So then it did some tree searching and it created a tree. And it gives actually two tools to view the tree. They've, they have their own viewer uh, tool, which is called the Open, Inter Open Interactive Tree Visual Visualization tool that they have. And then it, they also have this where it pumps this out into an external tool called, called iTool. I actually kind of like the iTool tool the best. Um, so I'm going to open that one up in a new tab. Okay, and here we see now we have our tree. And from here then you can use this control panel to do lots of different things that you want to do with your data. And so you might have to play around with this to get, but one thing for example is maybe I want my labels at the tips instead of at the very end. So I could click at the tips, right? Um, I can change how big we want the text, how you, know, how you want this tree uh, being displayed. We can display our um, branch lengths if we wanted. So let's say I look at this though now and I say, oh, I want to, I need to reroute this right to my out group. Well, these are all just um, mammals here, right? So all placental mammals. So maybe there's not a, I probably, this, this data set would have been better had maybe I included, I don't know, a, um, a marsupial or something like that as an outgroup, but for, for just argument's sake, let's say that human was the outgroup, okay? So I'm going to click on human, and then I can come down to tree structure and reroute tree here. And so you can see that reroutes, redraws the tree with humans as the root. So the analysis that we used also um, did do a quick uh, nodal support analysis. So you got some bootstrap data, and so that's right here in this bootstrap um, uh, uh, option and so you can push display. Now the original thing it does is it's just displaying it by the size here of the circles. But maybe you don't like that. Maybe you want it to actually just be text. So you can make it be the text and you know maybe I want my font a little bit bigger so I can actually read what those values are. And so these are in a in a percent value right now and um, that shows the relate the confidence that I have in the relationships of those nodes, right? And so, for example, the horse and the tapir, 99% of the time that it ran the bootstrap test or this nodal support test, these two organisms found were found themselves on the same node. So you can be very confident in the relationship of those two organisms. Same thing with the whales. Look at all the whales down here, 0.997. You know, almost every single time that they, they, did, they did the data perturbation to look at how statistically significant it is that those three whales are all contained in the same node, really, really strong support. And you know, maybe the question of this whole tree of this data set was, where did wells come from? Or in other words, what are wells most closely related to of all of the other mammals that are in this data set? And you can see that they're most closely related to the hippopotamus. And the bootstrap value is 0.92, which is pretty high. So there's good support for whales being sister group to the hippopotamus as opposed to you know some other mammal. If you ever need, if you're running an analysis and it's, and it's really long, you could put in your email. I think it's easier though to just copy the URL and you can stick that copied URL somewhere in a in a note in in, in your computer 
and then you can click on that at any time to come back to this main page to see everything that you have. Um, you can also download a lot of these files if you want to. You can go through and download these files. Uh, so really powerful website. And the nice thing too is that you could do multiple analyses. You could get one analysis running and then go start another browser, start another analysis, and you could do a bunch of different kinds of analyses. So anyway, that is the ngphylogeny.fr site. So feel free to play around with this. Again, it's got pretty good documentation and lots of different tools that you can use. And this is enough to uh, carry out all of your phylogenetic analyses for your poster. Um, there are, of course, tons of other programs, and if you're really interested, I can lean you in those directions as well. But this should be pretty close to, to be able to do what you need to do.